In this video, we're going to show you how to germinate and isolate spores on agar, even when our syringe is contaminated. As we'll see here soon, even though these spore syringes were purchased from a reputable vendor, they contain plenty of impurities, which are a leading cause of product loss when cultivating mushrooms. These losses can easily add up and cost an underprepared or unknowing cultivator hundreds of dollars in failed attempts. We're going to start off by inoculating three plates for each syringe with 1 ml of spore solution. We cover this initial step in our Eliminating Bacteria and Spore Syringes video, so feel free to skip ahead or watch on for a refresher. These plates are now being labeled with their respective strain. Here we've labeled them A, B, and C. And once we get further down the isolation process, we'll begin making numerical designations to help keep track of where we are in the isolation process. For now, we'll put these plates aside for a week and come back to have a look. Now here's where things get fascinating. I'm going to show you each plate one by one so you can see the similarities between the plates in each set. We're going to start off with the first plate in set A. So just give me a moment here while I pull the plate into focus. And as you can see, we have nice fluffy mycelium throughout the plate. However, we also see these small colonies of bacteria growing as well. These are the little round dots you'll notice spread all across the surface of the plate. Here's the second plate for syringe A, and you'll notice the same bacterial colonies forming throughout the plate, with the densest colonies forming between the 12 and the 3 o'clock position. Now, what you'll begin to notice as we go into this third plate is that every dish grows a random variation of contaminants along with the mycelium, so there's no real guarantee we can make on how healthy a plate will be until we actually have a look at it. This plate, for example, seems to have the worst contamination of all three dishes in the set. Now, this is interesting to note. Although each plate received the same amount of spores from the same syringe, the levels of contamination between each plate varies considerably. This is why some grain bags will colonize while others won't, even though we make inoculations using the same syringe. Sometimes the bacterial levels are simply higher in one inoculation, and that extra bacteria ends up colonizing the grain faster than our spores can germinate. As we get into the first plate of syringe B, immediately we see bacteria have consumed the entire plate. Not a single strand of mycelium is growing despite the large amounts of spores that we added. And as we open up the second plate, you'll see that we still have no mycelium. Now there are many factors that can contribute to this during the manufacturing of each individual syringe, but without actually being able to witness how the spores were harvested and the syringes made, we can't be sure at what part of the manufacturing process this bacteria was introduced. So with the third plate being viewed and no difference seen, we seem to have hit a roadblock with this syringe. Luckily, we do have our antibiotics, so later we'll see if we can clean it up on a plate treated with genomycin. Let's take a look at the first plate of syringe C and see what we're working with. It looks like we have an even distribution of mycelium and a different kind of bacteria now. This is fascinating because every plate we've seen is growing a different type of bacteria that is only found within the plates of its set. This points to a possibility that this manufacturer may have different spore print suppliers. And while the manufacturer itself may be completely sterile during the production of its syringes, these contaminants could have piggybacked onto the spore prints themselves during printing. Now, before we take our first transfers, we still need to see what we can do about syringe B, since we weren't able to get any mycelium from that syringe. What we'll be doing here is adding the same spores from syringe B onto a plate treated with antibiotics. Let's take a look at the first plate a week later. Now here's something interesting. While there is still no indication of mycelium, we can clearly see a streak of inhibited bacteria along the edge of the plate. If no antibiotics were present, this streak would have quickly multiplied and devoured the entire plate as it had in the regular dishes we saw. Moving on to the second plate of the set, let's find out if our luck is a little bit better. And it looks like we got good news. We've managed to get viable mycelium from this filthy syringe, and while we do see a couple of stalled colonies of bacteria on the plate, they're going nowhere, and we can easily transfer this mycelium on a regular plate. We do this because, just as with people, antibiotics are best when used as needed, rather than as a preventative measure. Let's take a peek at our third plate and see what we find. We've seen great results so far, so we're on the right track. Alright, it looks like we have more mycelium. A few inhibited colonies of bacteria are present, but we can easily transfer this to a fresh plate. Antibiotic agar cleans up dirty spores very effectively, and it's great to have on hand. We're currently offering it through our shop, so pick up some if you have some particularly dirty syringes. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Since we just finished viewing our syringe B antibiotic plates, let's go ahead and continue with those same plates as we take our initial transfer. I like to use a new fresh blade for each strain. For later transfers, I'll even use a new blade for each isolate, just to ensure I don't cross isolates between transfers. 
What I'm looking to do here is take a wedge of mycelium from the outermost growth. This outer growth tends to have less genetic variants of mycelia. Let me explain. Here's a cluster of spores under a microscope. Each spore is a genetically different phenotype, meaning important characteristics such as potency, colonization speed, and fruiting body size, and the like, will vary greatly from spore to spore. As spores germinate, these mycelial variants will begin to mat over one another, forming a mixture of genetics. When we fruit multivariant genetics, we get inconsistent results. Here's a picture of a block that was grown from a multi-spore inoculation or multi-phenotype inoculation. Notice the difference between the long, thin mushrooms at the top left when compared to the thicker cluster of mushrooms on the right. Now here's a photo of a block that was grown from an isolate. Notice how consistent the mushrooms are growing throughout the entirety of the block. This is what we're looking to achieve. Let's make our transfer from the outermost growth. A simple triangular cut works well. Once we make the cut, we simply lift it up out of the plate. You may need to lightly pierce it to keep it on the blade. Now, simply get your clean agar plate and place the transfer onto it. I'm placing it on the edge of the plate. That way it's easy for me to see the fastest growing variant of mycelium for the next plate transfer. Here we are doing the same thing for our second plate for syringe B. We make our triangular cut and lift it up out of the plate and carefully place it onto our fresh plate. Now we're gonna move on to our first plate of syringe A. This will be a little bit more of a challenge since all of the variants are growing on top of each other, making it difficult to distinguish where the outermost growth is. Also, we have these little colonies of bacteria throughout the plate that we need to be careful not to transfer over to our new plate. So what I'll do is select a piece of mycelium from the center of this little growth right here to take my transfer. This time, I'll place the transfer in the center of my plate. That way I can easily see the variants growing out from the center for the next transfer. We'll do the same for our other two plates for syringe A and now move on to syringe C. Since the mycelium hasn't expanded much in these plates, I'm simply going to make a transfer through one of these colonies and take a look at the variants as they grow out on a fresh plate. After finishing up with all the plate transfers for syringe C, all we need to do now is label our plates. Just as before, I'll go ahead and write out the strain of each plate and place them on their respective transfers. We'll start using designations for our next transfer, so for now, we'll just label these A and C. We'll also do the same for syringe B, which is being held in another box. And as you see, I like to store my cultures upside down. That way, any possible contamination that could have gotten into my cultures has to work against gravity to reach the agar. Well, that's it for our first video in our two-part series on spore isolation. We'll be uploading our second video here soon, so if you're curious how our first round of isolation turned out, keep an eye out for that. Take a look at our store to pick up cultivation products and agar. Every order helps to keep us creating informative content. For now, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.